Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to explore the world as it has changed over space and time with the Wayback Imagery Service from ESRI. Just do a search for those terms or go directly to the URL listed here. The default view is Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. In part one of this video series, I showed how to use this web mapping application called the Wayback Image Service. And now I want to show you how to dig deeper. Why do we want to dig deeper? Because we want to go into further analysis, spatial and temporal analysis. So let's just take an example of the Aral Sea over in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, right on the border there. Let's pan around till we see the disparate portions, formerly all one sea, but now in different pieces due to the decline in the water level. And I'm going to take a look at only versions with local changes and look at 2014, 2019, and 2020. Now notice the plus signs to the right side of each of the image dates. If you click on those plus signs, as I'm doing here, it says add this release to an ArcGIS Online map. Again, why do I want to do that? I want to do that because I want to bring it out of the web mapping application and into my ArcGIS Online application. So when you do that, you're going to be able to sign into your own ArcGIS Online account. And if you go to the developer site, you will be able to get a free account there to do exactly this. Or if you're at a school or a university, chances are you already have ArcGIS Online. If not, feel free to contact me and I'll show you how to get those accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and create some metadata as you saw me just do right now and then sign into my ArcGIS Online account. And then I'm going to be able to have the metadata page, which is right here, showing all the dates that I brought into ArcGIS Online. And of course, I can share this map. I can save this map. But right now, I just want to show you, look at this. You can bring it into ArcMap. You can bring it into ArcGIS Pro. You can bring it into the Web App Builder, the Experience Builder. You can build a dashboard. You can build a story map out of this. Oh my goodness, you've got a lot of choices at your fingertips. You could even create a, a presentation, which is sort of like a Web Map enabled PowerPoint slideshow, although it's much more than PowerPoint. It is a way for you to present your information, in this case, the changes over space and time with, with these images all from the Wayback Imagery Service. So now I've got it in ArcGIS Online, and you can see here that each layer comes in with the layer itself and also the metadata, which is very important because, as I mentioned in the first video, many of these images are actually mosaics over several different time periods, and so you want to be cognizant of the fact that you've got different dates here and you want to be able to investigate different places and where the images were actually, uh, what date the images were actually flown. So being cautious of the data, but yet also using it to its full advantage, bringing it into ArcGIS Online. And again, I can save this map, as you see there in the upper the portion of the map. I've got the ability to save this map. I can share it. I can create a presentation, as you see over in the upper right-hand corner. I can set the transparency now that I'm in ArcGIS Online, and I can do some things that I could not do inside the web mapping application. So again, I've already seen that I've got additional power. The other thing that I can do, of course, in ArcGIS Online is I can actually bring in data from the Living Atlas of the World or from ArcGIS Online, other content that other users have contributed. So for example, if I want to add the eco regions, I can do that. I can add population density. I can add world hydro so I can look at the rivers that flow into or formerly flowed in a more heavy fashion into the Aral Sea and thus contributed to the decline as those rivers were diverted for agricultural production. So I can add data to this and use it in my analysis. Another thing I can do is I can look at, of course, different scales, and I can see where the Aral Sea is in situation uh, in the, its political geography and also in terms of its ecoregions, in terms of its mean annual precipitation in the area, in terms of its proximity to mountains, and so on. I've got a lot of data now at my fingertips that I can bring in and a lot of different tools. For example, the measure tool that you see up to the upper right of the map. I can measure things. I can measure the extent of the Aral Sea in different time periods using these Wayback imagery layers. It's important to examine the metadata as I'm doing here with these different layers that I might want to add or might not want to add depending on my project goals. So be critical of the data as we explain weekly in the Spatial Reserves Data Blog. Be critical of the data. Know its limitations, know its benefits. So now I can see that, oh, okay, around here I've got the Central Asian Northern Desert. I can see the steppes and the also the uh, other ecoregions around there. So fascinating to be able to do this. What if we looked at mean annual precipitation and brought one of those layers in there? Again, looking at the metadata where appropriate and bringing in the data as we need to. So I, what I've done is I've taken the imagery 
from the Wayback Imagery Service, which was a web mapping application, and now I'm bringing it into ArcGIS Online for further analysis. So now I'm looking at the, the legend there so I can see that, yeah, it's a dry area, okay? And, and it's another factor in the declining water uh, levels of the RLC. Now, depending on the, the data that you're, you're adding, you might be able to add a pop-up. You might not be able to add a pop-up. Again, it just depends on the data that you're adding in. But at the very least, you'll be able to look at the le legend for the map in this case, as I'm doing here. I've got a couple of different layers here. I started with the Wayback Imagery layers for a couple different dates for the Arrow Sea, and now I'm looking sort of at a regional scale. But another thing that you can do now that you've got it into ArcGIS Online is you've got all of these al analysis tools at your fingertips. You can look at proximity, you can do overlay analysis, you can do a summarize within, you can calculate routes, lots of different things inside ArcGIS Online, and of course more things when you bring it into ArcGIS Pro, which you can also do as I indicated a bit ago. Now here's an example of another area. I've brought the Wayback imagery in for a, a certain local area, uh, looking at, in this case, urban sprawl and different expansion of neighborhoods. So now I'm looking at the imagery from several different dates, uh, all in the last eight years or so. But even over that short period of time, you can see lots of changes. I've also changed the base map so I don't get confused. If you have the base map set to imagery and you're also looking at imagery, oftentimes if you turn off all those images, you're not realizing that you're looking at the latest and greatest satellite image for that location. So it's important, I think, to change it off of imagery if you're actually analyzing imagery as your map layers. Just a tip though, uh, not necessarily something you have to do. But here I've got the transparency layer uh, or the transparency tool at my fingertips and I'm looking at the pop-ups that show exactly when that image was captured and uh, when it was actually mosaic. So different dates there again. Be critical of the data and know about seasonal variation. Here I'm looking at another map that I built with the Wayback Imagery Service and I built a simple swipe map. So I can look at with a swipe tool, it's kind of like a big squeegee across the map. It's a web mapping application and it's easily built. You just say share and then you say I want to make a web mapping application and I want a swipe map and this is the data I want on the left side and this is the data I want on the right side. So you're, you're building your own and I encourage you to have your students build their own swipe and and other web mapping applications. So here is a location near our former ESRI office in Colorado looking at expansion of office buildings and also the residential uh, apartment buildings and condos in that particular office park. I can also see that uh, one of these images was was flown at a not in a non-work day. So I can see cars and parking lots versus no cars and parking lots. And just to the south of that office park is an airport. So I can see the changes in the airport and the number of planes even parked on the on the runways and on the tarmac there at the airport. And I've got the ability, of course, to look at different scales. This is a rapidly growing area, Colorado Front Range, high Great Plains adjacent into the Rocky Mountain Front Range, and I can see a lot of urbanization onto the short grass prairie here in this area as I'm doing, all with a swipe tool, and I've all I've done is created a web map from uh, the web mapping application. It started with ArcGIS Online here, and then I've created a web mapping application inside that same tool, starting though with the Wayback Imagery Service from ESRI, and then creating a ArcGIS Online map, and then creating a swipe map from that. So lots of different things at your fingertips. Didn't even have time to go into Pro and do the additional analyses that you can do inside ArcGIS Pro, again, with this same set of images. So in Pro, you've got all kinds of image data analysis tools at your fingertips as well. So I encourage you to check this out, the Wayback Imagery Service from ESRI and all of the things you can do with it. Thanks.